Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Creative Caffeine Podcast. Back again. Back again. Nice. What's up, guys? You are listening to the Creative Caffeine Podcast. My name's Connor. My name's Ben. And in this podcast, if you're looking to live that creative life, this is the podcast for you. We're going to be talking all things video, photo, and content creation. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So sit back, grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and enjoy. <laughs> just cut the cut. <laughs> just shoot the audience. Boom. We have coffee today. Chink. Chink. It's not a very satisfying chink. No, so it's not. We we'll we'll, we'll swap spot. it out with this. There hey. we go. <laughs> mm. Very good. What are you going for, bruv? Cappuccino. Cappuccino. As, as per... As per, as per tradition, yeah, caramel latte. It's got. To be, I haven't had Costa in ages. Have you not? No. Ah. To be fair, I tend to go Starbucks if there's an option for two. I don't know which one I prefer because it's like the the big three: Costa, Starbucks, and Cafe Nero. Yeah, I think uh, Nero is my favorite. Like if I'm in Welling, I always go to Nero. Mm. Although when I go to Welling with Bart, it's normally like Nero in the morning, and then we'll go to. Starbucks nice. in the afternoon. See, I didn't actually realise. I've just realised it's actually in my pocket. But I've been going Hermitage so much recently. Didn't even realise they got a loyalty card. Really? Yeah, I've been going there for so long and only just found out they've got a loyalty oh, card and you can get free coffee. Saved. And that's like, actually true. The money you could have saved because their coffees are expensive. It's four pounds <laughs> twenty. <laughs> that's the number. Four twenty for a uh, for, for a caramel latte. Yeah, really. Four twenty. Wow. But then sometimes it'll fluctuate. I think I've said that before on a pod where like sometimes coffee shops will just charge us That's like insane. a random amount. Oh, computer's going off. That probably didn't even pick up anyway. That's almost half an hour's work of my part-time job just Literally. for one coffee at the Hermitage. It's so annoying. It's so it's annoying. Terrible. Yeah. Mad. Wow. Um, before we get good coffee though. Yeah, look, banging coffee. <laughs> banging coffee. Before we get into it, Guys, follow us on Spotify. We're nearly at like 100 followers. That would be great. Dude. We can actually see how many followers we've got now on Anchor. Oh, no, I'm not force quitting an application. Um, yeah, we've got like 93 followers. So oh, I'm going to have to close Chrome. <laughs> at the moment, if you hear any fans whirring, I'm currently transcoding like, I mean, Bez, how, how many files do you think this is on uh, the screen right now? Um, does it say how many? I It doesn't. I mean, it's But it's a lot. It. It's a lot of files. At least 300, at least. Yeah, I'd say that. I'm f- transcoding a huge, big project right it's now. Insane. And I thought, <laughs> I'm not going to u- need to use my laptop for for the duration I mean, of this you can pod. see it just on the edge of my, just here. Oh, These on the screen. The files. <laughs> that, is, that is unreal. That is a lot of stuff to transcode. So I'm just going to like force quit everything on my <laughs> laptop. Madness. What have you been up to this week, man? What have you been shooting? We haven't done a pod for, for time. We've been yeah, hella busy. <laughs> trying to think when we recorded the last one. Uh, I don't know what I've done since then. What's here? I feel like I've been so busy, but just... You know when you've been so busy, but you don't... It's all kind of gone into a blur. What, what yeah. the busyness has been. It's like, so I did... Um, I did a shoot for a bridesmaid shop. Was that since the last one? That was after the last one, I think. That yeah. Was it, yeah, so I did, I had a shoot in London, which was a bit of a mental shoot with quite a long story to go with it. But um, <laughs> it's a long story short, I basically, there was a studio in London that they wanted to film in um, and it was at Edgware Road tube station, like practically right next to it. And I thought uh, Edgware, like it's in out of London, Edgware, um, <laughs> Like near Watford. So they sent me like the postcode and everything. So I put the postcode into Waze and it came up with just like no results. So I put it into the built-in one in my car and that said no results either. So I was like, Weird. okay. And then I just had Edgware in my mind and she was like, oh, near Edgware Road Station. So I just thought, oh, I'll go to Edgware and I'll go to the station. So I put Edgware in the sat nav and it started driving me towards um, Edgware. And then in the end, I was like, oh, this doesn't like Don't feel right. say Edgware Road. <laughs> so and then I was like, drove around a bit. I put Edgware Road into my sat nav and then started driving further and further in. And I was like, I don't think I'm in Edgware anymore. <laughs> and then look, I told Bart to look at the uh, to look at the sat nav, uh, look at his map on his phone. And he was like, yeah, we've just gone past Camden. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I was like, OK, I was, 
Do it, Huey. Um, we're very near central. Um, and I was probably about 10 minutes away from where I should have been. Mad. So we turned around, drove all the way back to High Barnet, uh, slung the car on the road there, and then just tubed it in. Two That's hours a good late shout. for the shoot. Uh, I mean, <laughs> majority my fault. Partly ways. Partly why ways, do, partly you. Why do these not... Like, why does some postcodes not work? It's annoying. Like, you'd think with ways, because it's, like, so community-based. Mm. You can report accidents. You can yeah. report, you know, cars on the side of the road. You can yeah. report all sorts. But then they can't update yeah. the mats. It's, it, that's yeah. weird. So, and then, um, yeah, so they've emailed me, and so were like, they were completely fine with it. So I Win. was, like, relieved, and they were like... <laughs> that's when oh. they're like, oh, actually, we're, we're running two hours, two hours behind anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then... Um, they Martin were like, guy forgot a cable. Because... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I could take some off the invoice for you because, like, I felt well bad. And then yeah. in the end, they were like, oh, no, don't worry about that. We'll, uh, because they have a sh- shop in Chelsea. Mm. Um, so they were like, oh, instead, we'll just pay your expenses. Can you do like a free shoot, like, for like a two hour brunch that Fair. they're having at the shop? So I was like, yeah, I'll sure, do that. Why not? Chelsea, More that's content so. Content for me to share at the end of the day as well. So. Exactly. Yeah. Chelsea's a like bougie place. Yeah. No, <laughs> exactly. It's, so. it's been a busy week for me. I've been shooting, like, when was the last part? The 17th, I think? Mm, I can't even remember. Something like that. Maybe the 24th? I'd, no, it's 17th, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like, literally, I've been shooting so many Instagram reels for people. It's it's unreal. Did a shoot... I've seen loads coming up, so... It's mad. Did a shoot at the British Library. Mm. Um. This, no, on the 22nd. That was, that was nuts. Um... Mm. It was really weird because we we're in the, this place called the Treasurer's Gallery, and mm. there's all these like sacred texts. Yeah, there's like the Magna Carta. Yeah, there's a, an, an authentic, like well, obviously it's authentic, but there's like an intact copy, and then there's like a burnt copy from like the Great Fire of London or something. Oh, they actually like the real deal. Yeah, the real deal, like the actual Magna Carta, all these different like Leonardo da Vinci like scripts and mm. stuff. And uh, before the shoot, they're like, "Oh, no lighting, like." it's got to be like able to be dimmable and not to be plugged in. I was like, uh, we're filming interviews. Yeah. How the f- are we going to do this? Like, it's great. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I'm going to need some sort of lighting. Yeah. They said I couldn't use that because even it dimmed, it was too bright. Um, and it had to be plugged in. I haven't got a V mount. The- Apparently. Yeah. They dim the lights during the day mm. because it can like deteriorate the text and stuff. So I had to use those little Niwa, like panels, the LED oh, yeah. panels, which were not fun to shoot because they don't have a diffuser. Oh, yeah. So they were on the lowest setting. Mm. The light wasn't spreading very far. So it was literally like spotlight lighting. It was not not great. Oh, my word. It was chaos. That's insane. Like nuts. Like for low light, luckily, yeah. these Sony's handled these. pretty well. And we're talking camera gear today. We uh, are. Very yeah. oh, I'm getting good with the segues. Like, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm... T- However, as well, mm. um, I was just going to mention, I know I mentioned in the last podcast that I had my first wedding photography gig come up. I've done that since as well at, the, uh, at the registry office. Oh, no. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wasn't as bad as... I've seen the I'm shots. Thinking, they look good. I know man. you mentioned the window mm. and I saw the window mm-hmm. and I was happily, I was very happy that the curtains are across it, so yeah, <laughs> it's could, uh, it's a weird place, isn't it? It's just very small. I don't mm. feel like there's a lot of room to move. And around. the walking out bit, that big banister yeah, in the middle. Oh yeah, <laughs> you get like no room for like when they're walking back up the aisle. Yeah, there's only like because you got to walk backwards seats, and then you got to so go left for a door. Yeah. yeah, it's so weird, and that door's really tight, especially if you're and doing the door's video. Also really ugly in the background. It's the rank, isn't it? It's yeah. rank. Like if you're doing the video there and you got a gimbal, you got to sort of. Sort of Keep an eye on your framing <laughs> whilst also turning left and going through a, like a, a really tight door. Yeah. I feel for any wedding videographers oh, who have to a... shoot at Stevenage Registry Office. <laughs> and like the worst part as well was outside when they were doing the um, the confetti bit with the banister bit. Mm. Kind of, it goes round and then yeah. I'm like trying to... Automatic doors. It's kind of hard to organise all the guests to like go round like that. But yeah. I say all the guests, you you're not allowed that many guests there, I don't think, are you? It's I don't know. I've done a wedding there once and uh, let me actually I've got the photos here. But it was like a, an Indian like an Indian wedding. That mm. was the one I think I mentioned that the bride's no, the groom's mother hated 
the um oh, I should the know groom. on portals. She she the groom's mother hated the bride. The, the bride. Oh yeah, here we go. This is one of my f- the funniest shots I've ever seen. The the bride, the mother of the, the groom did not want to smile at all in any of the photos. It was fucking awkward. Will it load? Bro, why won't you load? Oh, there we go. I'll just zoom in. Would not smile. Wait, so she hated... She, she is his mum. Yeah. She hated the bride. Like, she <laughs> awkward oh smile. She would not smile in any of them. Like, mm. the bride didn't care. She she was having a good day. She wasn't going to let anyone ruin her day, which I thought, you know, full respect to. But let me find the Stevenage oh. Registry Office. Oh, there we go. Right. I don't know how you can get married to someone that, like, <laughs> your families don't get on this. Just set yourself up for awkwardness. Yeah. Especially for the groom as well, like. Literally. So these are the shots we got. Like, we got some nice bits of confetti. Yeah. I don't know if you can see on the screen, like, on the laptop. Actually, let me put it up there. Um, yeah. We got some some all right confetti shots, but it's just that there mm. that just doesn't look great. And because the light's so tragic inside, I felt that when I came out to do the confetti shot, it was like... Yeah, it was uh, it was almost so nice because it was like oh the natural light. The easiest thing is to go with black and white, like mm. yeah, the lighting weren't great. It's all just, it just looks like hospitals. It, white it looks walls. like a dentist's office. Yeah, it looks like a dentist's office. But there we go. We move, we move. But we're talking camera gear today. We are. We are. We are both avid Sony fanboys. Yep, we are. <laughs> Only way to go. Only way to go. There's no two ways about it. <laughs> no two ways. <laughs> mm-hmm. Unless there is a small exception if you shoot red or black magic. Red or black magic. You're considering a black magic. I am. And then there's so many things. I just need to borrow one first, I think, and then work it out. Hasn't Culver's got one? He does. Yeah, Culver's has one. And then also Natalie's Mark has uh, one. True, well. yeah. Has he got um, the 6K or the 4K? He has the 6K, which apparently he's selling as well. So. Oh, I mean, I'm going to try one of them out first. Give I think they try. both have the 6K and then maybe buy his if it's still on Cause up for sale. We're, little tangent, we're hoping to get a guy called James Matthews on the pod. Bosh. He, Bosh. <laughs> sweet. He, if he says Bosh on the pod, we're going to have to record well, it into one of these. <laughs> yeah, and make it a soundbite. We probably could. I'll, I'll just clip <laughs> something from YouTube. But he shoots on the Black Magic. 6K, 6K Pro. Pro. Yeah. It's weird because it's the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, but it's far from pocket size, is it? Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know why they call it than Pocket. The mirrorless cameras. Yeah, it's so weird why they call it Pocket. They are ugly cameras. Mm. I do hate the look of them. But. but then when you get something like the Sony FX3 mm. or the FX30, which is like the APS-C yeah. size version, they are much more pocket size. Oh, yeah. Like, absolutely. It's they make like it out a like smaller it's a GoPro, but it really isn't. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, he shoots on a black magic. We're hoping to have him on the pod Yeah, that, in the coming If he months. responds to me, he responded once, and then I need to probably follow up on that one again. We've got to follow up, yeah. That, 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 there's a client tip. Follow up. Follow, follow up, up on your leads. <laughs> but, um, I'm rubbish at that. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got now reminders on my website for, for following up. Have you? Yeah, because otherwise I will just forget. And just lose yeah. track of like people we've messaged or people we've inquired. It's always like I feel like I don't want to lose them as a client and piss them off because mm. I try to put myself in their shoes and be like, if this guy was just hounding me after, I was like, I'd probably just give up and block him. <laughs> yeah, that's so, a shout. But I don't want to go too far. But at the same time, I've got to follow up, haven't you? But yeah. So yeah, we're gonna chat camera gear. How, how should we go for it? Should we go for like each brand individually? Yeah. I should we start like, with the worst first? Yeah. Let's go with the. Yeah, let's go with the worst. worst. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about Nikon. Oh. <laughs> I need to get used to the new button layouts. Buttons. We're, we'll, we'll, start, we'll start with Nikon. Now, if you're a video shooter, Nikon ain't the one for you. Yeah. It ain't it. It's, I mean... Nikon, Nikon, however you pronounce fair, it. I was very surprised they had a video setting on there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I. they don't, like talk about video at all they don't sell it as a yeah they don't even put anything i know they've got these these photo aren't they yeah well they've got these ones called the nikon z9 or the z is it the z6 because they all every other brand has cine cameras nikon doesn't well they they're trying to they're trying to the autofocus i don't think isn't there they've got here on wex we've got a nikon z6 2 
And it does actually have some video specs. Um, is it 4K? It is 4K. Um, I'm trying to find the video specs. I mean, like, like, like I say, they don't really push Minimal. video too much. <laughs> I would say if you're, if you're looking to get a Nikon, you're probably looking to shoot landscapes. Because yeah. the auto... Fo- oh, here we go. Captures truly stunning for 4K UHD, 30 frames per second video. Mm. 10 bit, it says. It says oh, recorded via HDMI. So do you not get internal 10 bit? That's really um, weird. I definitely no. think this is a photo camera. I've probably chosen the wrong kind of Nikon to look at. But if you're if you're looking at getting a Nikon, it's a good beginner camera, yeah. isn't it? I think it just depends where, when you started as well, because obviously, um, like way back when I was like way younger, like my granddad was quite a successful uh, wedding photographer, mm. and like he always swore by Nikon yeah. to the point where it was like everything he had is Nikon. Then when he died, <laughs> obviously we've kind of like inherited loads of his Nikon stuff, and like my mum uses like the Nikon camera, and it was like. We just got loads of them now, and nice. like they are good for photos. But they, like, if you put it side by side with a mirrorless photo, mm. you can definitely tell the difference. Yeah, a, like Nikon have got some mirrorless cameras, but the most people that I know um, that shoot Nikon or Nikon, they take they use their DSLRs, don't mm. they? And yeah. DSLRs are dead. So if you're looking to buy a camera, don't get a DSLR. Don't get a DSLR. It's oh, mirrorless no. all the way. It ha- it has to be. What like, you got to think about is like a DSLR is like a brick phone, mm. and it's like it is like a brick. Yeah. They like at one point. I remember when I first started YouTube. I was like, oh, I gotta get a DSLR. Yeah. And but and then it's just there's so much effort to uphold as well because like like with a mirrorless, if you want to clean it you've got two little bits you need to clean like yeah. just well the lens and then well the these two have got sensor cleaning built yeah. in which Whereas is this great you've got to like lift the mirror clean it and use like, the brush the little yeah. blower thing it's just so much effort it's long yeah nikon i don't think i mean there. when you look at those professional camera magazines you know like digital camera or canon shooter those sorts they've of magazines all got nikon on the front. they've all got nikon on the front all of the landscape shots, because I've, I've picked up a few of them in my time, mm. and I'd say the majority of the people that are shooting like these epic, stunning landscapes are shooting with Nikon. Yeah, that's I wouldn't. That's I personally wouldn't use long it for video. Lenses are so cheap compared to other brands and stuff, though. Because like, yeah. um, what's it? My mum's inherited like a well good one from my granddad that was like a um, something to five hundred, and mm. then got the two times converter on there as Ooh, well so like make it like a 1600 beach, or something yeah it goes so good Jeez. You can proper zoom in on stuff but like obviously a nikon lens is going to be so much cheaper than like a sony lens, a sony like g, g master, master yeah. or a canon l series or no like one would a, be doing landscape photography if they were sony's <laughs> yeah I, I don't know like yeah let's go for let's go to sony i say the last two or three years sony have been absolutely killing it Mm-hmm. With their cameras. They've been putting out so many cameras from like like your vlogger series, like the ZV-1s, the ZV-E10s, which are like good sort of intermediate sort of cameras. Mm. Then they've got like, you know, like your Sony FX3, yeah. which is like the cinema camera. Yeah, It's basically like an A7S3, but yeah. with like a cinema body. Uh, you didn't like the A7S3, did you? I mean, I could probably deal with it better now because mm. I was going from... Uh, well, an FS7 mm. uh, at uni to... Different menu. to Yeah, like went from a cine camera to a mirrorless. Yeah. And then it was just very weird. But and then obviously now I primarily use an A7 III. So going to an A7S III mm. probably isn't actually too bad now. But it was all like the... Because we were using Samyang cine lenses on it. And they were just... They just left the little ring around the edge. I've been looking at the Samyang 85. Yeah. It looks really no like. autofocus on them. I don't no, so. no. This one's got so. autofocus. Oh, it? It's F1.8. It's, it's Sony nice. E-mount. I saw Lizzie Pierce do a video on it the other day. Samyang's quite a good price as well. Yeah, I um, I had it in my Amazon basket because I was shopping. Samyang Sony 85. It looked... It was like four 500 quid. Oh, not too bad. Yeah. I mean, it's not, not too bad for at all. For a lens. For an 85 f1.4. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Jeez. Damn. Um, I like the way Sony lay out their cameras because yeah. they've got the Sony A7, like A7 III, A7 IV. Those are sort of like the hybrid ones, so mm. they're good for photos and videos like this. That does yeah. 4K. I've got two Sony A7 IVs 
they do 4K 60, which is great for video, but then also it's 32 megapixels, yeah. which is still great for photos if mm. you need to crop in. So those are sort of that, like the hybrid range. Then you've got the A7S range, which is mainly fo- focused for videos. Yeah. So you've got like the A7S3, which every bloody YouTuber under the sun has. Yeah. But then again, if you want to take photos on it, it's only 12 megapixels. Is it 12? Only 12 it's megapixels. I mean, it's probably enough. People are not really going to notice. Print big. Unless yeah. you're printing big, yeah. But then they've got the photo line, which is like the A7R. The R, yeah. Mm, like, what's which their Cole latest one? Which to Iceland, and his, like, photos were, like, butter smooth. What, what's their latest one? The A7R... Is it 5? A7R5, yeah. Megapixel count. Um... Let's have a look. A seven R five. It's four grand. <laughs> nice. It's sixty one megapixels. It shoots eight K. I kind of feel like this should be in like the hybrid but range. Sony confused me with that because they released like the A nine and uh, the A nine is yeah. like a high megapixel one as well. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, if your A seven R is like your photo range, then what's the point in all like these A? Yeah, numbers? they've not released an R for a while. I can't remember when the Sony A seven R Mark two came out, but it was it was a long ago. So they do like an A. It was like an A1, was that? An mm. A9? Oh, yeah. What's the specs on the Sony A1? Sony A1 is like the god tier camera. Mm. Like, it's nearly six cra- like six grand. Like, it ain't going to be cheap. I've if you're- shot with one wedding photographer that's used one before, and I was like, oh my word, like, is it actually that good? <laughs> 50 megapixels, 8K up to Jesus. 30, 10 bit 422, 4K 120. It doesn't have a flip out screen. It's basically a cine camera. It is sort of like a cine camera. It doesn't overheat, even in 8K, which is mad. It's got full-size HDMI. That's unreal. That's half the price of my car, though. Like, <laughs> it's just, you can't really, like... And it's car, on like, sale. It's on that, sale. It was six and a half grand. It's now it all just time, under six. With a camera, like, I don't know if I could justify, like... Unless, I'd say, unless you were doing solely weddings and you know you can make that back with, like, four weddings, yeah, I probably wouldn't buy it. So I'm going to close that tab before I buy it. But that's four weddings without (laughs) tax. Yeah. But then there's something like the A7R5, which people have been loving. It's got this weird flip-out screen. So it flips outwards, Mm. but then also it flips does the up bit. It's, like, got, like, a multi sort of bracket sort of thing. It's really weird. Um, It looks pretty cool. New AI-powered deep learning. I mean, AI is just getting in everything now, isn't it? <laughs> it's right in my website for me. <laughs> it's right in your website. It's right, in my, it's right in my Instagram posts. Like, it's nuts. Like, it's got animal, bird, vehicle, and insect subject detection. I mean... Insect? Insect. I mean, what are you using? What? Like a macro lens with that? Insect detection. That is insane. Yeah. It's like an ant. It's like, yeah. I know. It. Yeah, literally. Just doing I a photo shoot. focus an, on an ant. <laughs> and mate, if it does that, that'll be, that'll be nuts. That's insane. That uh, is pretty nuts. Yeah, Sony's, we, we love Sony's. We are probably being a little bit biased here. I mean, yeah. Uh, but, the only gripe I have with Sony's is that they release a bit too fast and I mm. can't keep up because obviously I get used to like the A7 III and I'm like, right, I'm... Because, like, when you shoot weddings, you like to know your way around your camera, like, yeah. perfectly. Like, you have to master, master it so mm. that, like, say that you probably have, like, two seconds between two different things that are happening. You need to be able to quickly change between... you got to be able to do it blindfolded, didn't you? Yeah. So, it's like, right, I've got that file with my A7 III. And then, like, they're like, oh, no, the A7 IV's out now. You need to get that. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, my God, like, one, I don't have the money. Two, like, I've got to, like... Well, I know my camera now, but it's mm. like learn more stuff on top of that. Yeah. And it's like, they need to, it's almost like they need to space it out a bit more because it's constantly like, well, as well with weddings, you've got to have top equipment because mm. if you don't, then people will find someone else. And if you get top equipment, you can charge more as well. Yeah. But like if they, if someone that knows about cameras comes up to you and you're like shooting on a, I don't know, on just like an old A7 or something. Mm. Like my B cam is the A7S2, but if that was my main camera and then someone would be like, oh, well, I know someone with an A7 IV, I'll go to them. Yeah. But like, it's so impossible to keep up with the cameras right now because they Last year, I think Sony released so many cameras. They released like one a month or yeah. something. They did like a, a ZV-1, then they did a ZV-1F, a ZV-1, like a ZV-F10 yeah. or something. Then like, they've is done it- the FX3, they've now done the FX30. Yeah. Which is like an AP, basically the same thing, but APS-C. Mm. Um, what else have they put out? 
so many new lenses. Like like the, they've got the power zoom range and yeah. then they've got like the G Master ones. Yeah. It's yeah, they just put out so much. Every stuff. camera company's doing it now as well, like GoPro's doing it. Mm. Like as soon as you bought something, it's out of date the next day and it's just like, well We were literally chatting about GoPro before we started recording. Yeah. I haven't used my GoPro ten for ages. Yeah. And like I haven't found a use for it. I hardly use mine to be fair. It's just I wanted to record like some loads of like little POV photo yeah. walk things. Like you know what Teppo's doing mm. at the moment on his channel. They're really cool. They're quite relaxing to watch. Um, um if I can find his My channel. GoPro is just so temperamental that I just gave up because Well you got the te- the, the nine. nine. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't ever upgrade since to I the ten. It, it's like I know they're practically the same, aren't they? Yeah. Um uh, sorry, I wouldn't upgrade from the ten to the eleven because the only difference is you get ten bit now. Well, yeah, the only thing I noticed that, between the 9 and the 10 is that it's got a blue logo, not a white one or something. Yeah, these things are cool, like these little oh, POVs, yeah. but I've not... He lives in a nice looking place, though. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah, I haven't found, like... Maybe in Iceland. Some good spots here, yeah, in Iceland, we'll have to go back. Like, fact, these sorts of videos are cool, but I don't do too much action stuff. Mm. It's, yeah. Um, it's one of them things, it's like, ever since I got my GoPro, it was so... Um, I don't know, whenever I went to use it, it mm. would either freeze or the mode wouldn't switch smoothly, like the screen's a bit laggy. Mine would overheat. Yeah, and that. Speaking of overheating, let's talk Canon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sony are known as well in their smaller bodies. Yeah, oh, yeah, A7 and their A7 <laughs> does overheat. We, we've eliminated that problem now. Yeah. No more Sony overheating. bought two A7 4s. <laughs> they are my babies, they are my children. <laughs> um, yeah, the Sony, A, uh, sorry, the Canons. Yeah, they, Canon haven't released many cameras like as rapidly as Sony has. Like their last sort of two big, re- well, three big releases, we'd say the, what was it? Canon R5, R5 Canon R6, and this Canon R3. Yeah. Which and they've done, they've done like another C something, another Cine release. Uh, oh, the R5C. Oh, R5C, the R5C yeah, yeah. Which um, has got mixed reviews because oh, it's it? like, it's got a separate dial for photo and video. But it also takes like 10 seconds to really? switch between each one. It's That's like a so separate bad. menu. Like you get with the video one, you get like the yeah. cine, Canon Cine menu. With photos, you get like the standard mm. Canon menu. But it takes okay. 10 seconds to like switch between. Wow. Um, apparently also drains your battery really? like loads. Canon's good. Like we've both had Canons. Yeah. I had a couple of Canon M50s. I had a Canon M6 Mark II. Recently, just well, not recently, about a year ago, sold all of them, sold all my Canon gear, just gone, all gone. So yeah, I mean, I'm in the Sony ecosystem now. I was never Canon mirrorless. I was um, DSLR. Canon was my first ever like uh, SLR for mm. um, for YouTube. I just had like the 1300D back way back. Nice, and it was like 720p 60. Yeah. Um, Love it. Cinematic. Yeah. I think it was at the time. Yeah. And then, um, everyone had like a Canon 70D or an 80D, yeah. didn't they? Well, before that, I had a Panasonic camcorder, Jeez. which was amazing because it had a flip screen. And I was like, how, how is such like a good price camera like that, like having a flip screen, but Sony can't even implement it? It's weird because there's there was a channel. Do you remember? I don't know if they still post in the same format, but they were called What's Inside. And it was literally yeah. like a dad and a kid. Open. They just cut it open. It's very different they now. because the play kids, button, didn't they? Yeah. Um, and they all used to film it all on like a little dad camcorder yeah. thing. And I was like, mad. They got well, like 10 Casey mil subs. used to shoot so much stuff on little terrible cameras as well. Yeah. Oh, he, they used to look so good though. He was always Canon. He was like a Canon 70D, then an 80D, which were actually APS-C cameras, weren't they? Were they? Yeah, they were APS-C. I don't think they were full frame. Uh, um, I don't know. Now he's one. Sony. Now he's Sony. Now he's yeah. Sony. Good man, Casey. Gone to the light side. Yeah, <laughs> it's gone to the good side. Canon, I think they're trying, but they just they cripple their cameras. Like with the they M50. All look the same as well. Yeah. Like the Canon M50, I think still to this date, is Canon's best selling interchangeable lens camera. Mm. It's got a flip out screen, it's got good autofocus, it's got all right video, but then they cripple it with the 4K. Yeah. They advertised it. And I don't know why they advertised it as Canon's first 4K mirrorless camera. Yeah. But then when you switch it in 4K, it crops and you lose the autofocus. Yeah. Why? It's like, yeah. It's so why stupid. do they cripple things like that? They do that with the, 
the Canon R5s. Mm. Like, they advertise it as this ultimate 8K camera, but then when people were first reviewing it, they were like, uh, this overheats really badly. Yeah. Like, my even like, in 4K. My old, like, dream camera was a Canon with the old 1DX. That was, mm. uh, I remember used to go into Selfridges all the time. Look at the 1DX. Back when I had the money to go to London, like, every week, and it was like, every week I'd go into Selfridges, be like, whoa. Back when Peter <laughs> was day. logging on a... Peter yeah, McKinnon it was so on. good. It was just so big, wasn't it? It, it was, was like, huge. Like Peter battery. McKinnon's right arm must be like hench yeah. from like vlogging, vlogging with that thing. That, yeah. And Matty had one as well, Matty Hapoya. He vlogged on one. And now, I mean, how much is it? Then they used the EOSR after that, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. EOSR. So the Canon One DX Mark II is. Let's have a look on Wex. I don't know. Let's sell them new now. Oh sure. wow! This is the One DX Mark Three. It's. Two thousand one hundred ninety nine pounds. Wow, I thought it'd be more. C- than considering that. that the one DX, oh, I think that's used uh, on Jessup's. It's seven grand for a one DX Mark Three. Fucking hell, that is mad. Wow. And it's and it's DSLR. It's not even mirrorless. No, you can't justify that. That nah. DSLRs are dead. DSLRs yeah. are dead. Now Canon, like Canon's, everyone says Canon's color science is. Like the one, but I think Sony's up there now, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it depends how good you are in post as well. If you're shooting, yeah. in, um, if you're shooting in log, then mm-hmm. it's kind of up to you. What if you if you're good at color grading, then you could probably make something quite good out of anything. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, I think as well with DJI as well, their standard color profile is like oh, Sony. it's great. It's like I I quite like their standard profile. So if I shoot any small projects that like people are like, oh no, I want it like quick turn the next day. Yeah. Then it's like, well, yeah, I'll shoot it normal then, and yeah. maybe chuck a lot on top. But yeah. it will, like, essentially, it is basically Sony's colors though, and they do well. True. <laughs> DJ. Oh yeah. Should we touch on DJI? DJI make like a whole range of stuff now. It made a horrid looking Sony camera. I don't know what. The yeah, it looked like a you know that that video of the chicken with the wobbly yeah. head. Yeah. It's like a four axis gimbal. Yeah. Was it the DJI Ronin 4D or something? Oh yeah, that was it. Yeah. I um, saw one at the trade show and it looked horrid. DJI Ronin. Might be a good camera, but. It's I think it's, it, it looks incredible, but I don't know what lenses it takes. It takes mm. like its own sort of, f- there's three lenses. There's like a 35 and stuff. It is a very random looking thing. I, like, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> The image stabilization you're going to get from that is probably impeccable. Yeah, I mean DJI makes. I wonder whose thumbnail gimbals. that is. Oh yeah, <laughs> let's let's take a guess. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a weird, weird camera. It's just like I don't know. They've. Um, is it full frame? Is it APS-C? I don't, I don't really know. It's got this lidar sensor thing on top. It just looks like an awkward shape to be holding for a long amount of time. It's very, very weird. It does look like they've mashed up sort of like a cinema camera body, like an FX7, like there, with a drone controller, and then like an an RC or something. It's very, very weird looking. Very strange. But the reviews have been great for it. Yeah. I mean, the footage looked great from what Matty did. But it's also like five and a half grand. Mental. Camera gets so expensive the fact these that days. A DSLR is still more expensive than that, though. Yeah, the prices just aren't consistent. Uh, like it's so weird. But DJI, they are the ones to go for if yeah. you're looking for a drone. Like oh yeah, for drones and I'd say for gimbals as well. Gimbals always. I mean, you got the Weeble. I know Dave used the uh, the crane, the giant crane. giant crane. Yeah, but I I don't know. Maybe like back then, I think they were quite good to start out with. Um, mm. Fire alarm. <laughs> it's fire that goes off every Wednesday. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> um, It'll go off again in a sec. So, um, well, yeah, Zion Crane. <laughs> Zion Crane. <laughs> so, there goes go. off again. Um, so, yeah, Zion Crane, I think, is very... Uh, when it first came out, it was, like, top of the market, I think. But yeah. Whereas now, I think... 
DJ I have they got the RS3, they've RS3 made them Pro. all different shapes and sizes, and yeah. they've kind of covered the market, haven't they? They got so. the RS3 Mini now, which I'm yeah. looking at, which looks great. Yeah, it looks really cool. Apparently, it can handle like an A7S3 with a 24 to 70. That's insane. On it takes a two Mini. kilogram payload. But then I saw a video on Instagram the other day. Someone, if you don't know what the RS3 Mini is, it's like this tiny little gimbal, but mm. can take like a massive payload. Someone balanced a 70 to 200 on it. It makes no sense. <laughs> it's so bizarre. And it's like 300 quid, I think. Like, or f- maybe 350. DJI Mini Free. No, not Mini Free Pro. What's it called? DJI RC. RS. Oh, RS. RS3. RS3 free. RS Mini. That's it. Free f- oh, free f- 340. That's not no. bad. And it's got like this, its own, it's got its portrait mode as well. So you can like How much rotate. Is that each month if you did it like over time. I can't do anything over time now because I've, I'm have i still paying my thingy off. But oh, you only have to do one at a time. I think so, yeah. Um, you can pay over three months. I mean, if I logged out of my Amazon account, I'm pretty sure it would show me. Make a new one. Make a new <laughs> one. <laughs> no, I don't, don't have too many monthly outgoings. Like, that's the only that's monthly insane. outgoing I've got for camera yeah. gear now. Um, yeah, they've got oh, they got the little combos. So they got one with the mics. Oh yeah, DJI oh, yeah. make mics now, as well, which is which is interesting. But drone wise, I mean DJI, oh, they're releasing the so many drones as well, though, aren't they? And there's going to be more this year as well. Yeah. We're only in February. They've not released any the drone fact yet. That, like they released that Mavic Classic as well. That was just didn't like that. No, I mean the price on it was just ridiculous. Mini drones, mini mini drones. This is my favorite one at the moment. Mini Free Pro. They did release a Mini Free, mm. but I'm not entirely I sure. I want to buy one of them. It's great. Just because they're cheap and small. Like, Shoots I don't want to get rid of mine. I just want to get something just that's small, but yeah. I can't justify spending that price on it. But, like, just. How, how much is small. a Mini Free? Because you've got a remote. Haven't yeah. You? DJI Mini Free Pro. If you're going to get a drone. I mean, unless, like, you're going to do the full sort of pilot's license thing. Yeah. You're actually going to be using it for commercial work. I would say get like a mini free or a mini free pro because this is less than 250 grams. You're not affected by as many drone laws. Mm. It still shoots like 4K 60. Yeah. 43 megapixels. It's nuts. Whereas, no, um, 48 megapixels. Sorry. I don't know what the weight of mine is, but I got the Mavic Air 2 and it was mm. like way heavier. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas this, I mean, has this got a battery in it? No, it doesn't. It's annoying because they fit in the same size bag as well. <laughs> yeah. Same it's size. It's just stupidly yeah, heavy. It literally it's probably got so much weight that doesn't need to be on it. It's the same bag. Yeah. No, it's so bizarre. It's so annoying. Like, how do they sell it individually? I don't know. Surely they do. I think they do. Oh, here we go. 650. 650. Oh, not too bad. That's not too bad. Oh, has that got. Oh, that's with a remote. Oh, that's with the remote. Six thirty nine on its oh. own. That's not much of a difference. You, you might as well, as well just a buy a remote. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. Um, I mean, it is such a good drone. Yeah, no, they are. It is brilliant. Like the fact that it can shoot vertical, like that's so good. It's phenomenal. Yeah, it shoots vertical. It does like master shots, which is yeah. fab. It's a great drone. That's the thing. Is that they're, they're like the only kind of like company in kind of doing drones really um yeah i don't know like do you remember gopro released that drone oh the karma. Good gopro karma yeah casey's review and that was enough to casey's review was oh. horrific of it yeah like it people like i remember people reporting that it was just flying mm. away it was yeah. just no nose diving down yeah it'd lose connection but and I stuff think that dji have always been like pretty good on it like even i had a phantom three before as well and like mm. that survived quite a long time as well like they and like before that you had to stick gopros on drones like i think the phantom 2 dave oh, yeah. had as well and he had to stick a gopro on it <laughs> have you seen the D, what's it called the dj is it enterprise okay big drone it's um it's what's it called oh dji mate mattress 30t mattress i don't know what how do you pronounce it but it's like it's huge it's their like one of their recent oh drones word. it's used for like people who have like farms agriculture oh yeah um oh is it like a um what they called um like an emergency 
You saw, no, no. It's, I don't think it's really designed for filmmaking. Oh. It's sort of designed for sort of like, you know, like search and rescue and stuff. Oh, okay. It comes with like look, this huge remote. Jesus. Like, it's pr- it's a still on pre That's a drone for taking down other drones that fly. Literally, that's places. a drone you weaponize. Like, yeah. that's the case it comes in. Like, it's 10 grand. It's 10 grand oh for a drone. It word. is huge. It's got like a built in like telephoto lens. Wow. Um, I think it's got a flight time of like an hour. What? Yeah. It is massive. That's annoying because it's like, well, they can make that then. Why don't they just put that into every drone? Because yeah. they almost make it out like, oh, we can't fit any more flight time into such a small battery. But you can. It's like, yeah. But sure. then again, I think it's like the weight of the battery impacts it. Because oh, yeah. The DJI Mini 3, this is the battery that comes with it. I don't think I've ever really taken the battery out of this. Oh really? No, I don't because I've I've only got one battery just because oh, I just found that. The drone. Yeah, I just charge it in the drone, just plug it in USB C because mm. I found the half an hour and a half no, what was it thirty five minute flight time has been enough. So they've got this ultra light battery. Oh, okay. I mean feel the weight of that. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like a toy. Um that will give you like thirty five minutes flight mm. time under ideal conditions. Unless you're flying in sport mode, then you get like five minutes. <laughs> that pisses me off about DJI though, all this having to move the arms, because on mine, um if I wanna so I have a port uh Oh yeah, yours are so in I weird have places. S D card port like there. On and the then side. USB C's there. So if I want to take put any U uh, mm. put one in, you have to fold the uh leg out, put it in, then put it back in. Or weird. If you want to plug it the USB C and if you use the internal storage, just yeah, just sat on my desk, got that with half the legs out. And That's like, so weird. I don't know. I feel like they're gonna snap easily because they're quite, yeah, they, they, they are quite flimsy, yeah. But I don't worry that it's gonna like break or anything, like oh, it no. still feels yeah. sturdy ish. But yeah, this is the battery that comes with it. But in so the US, nice. not in the EU or the UK mm. for some reason, you can get this thing called the intelligent flight battery, it gives you 45 minutes of battery what? life. What? Same size, but it's heavier, so it takes it over the two hundred and fifty gram mark, which is a uh, which is a bit annoying. But it, I mean, if if you need that extra flight time, yeah, I mean, half an hour is good enough for me. Like the thing is, if like someone saw you flying it, like they'd be like, oh, it's just a mini free. They're not going to be yeah. like, bring that down. Like I've got my weighing scales over it. Yeah, literally. I mean, it says it on the side that it's two hundred and fifty grams, which is yeah. which is great. Here's a question: What would you like to see as we wrap up? What would you like to see? this year or in the future for cameras like a feature or some sort of thing Ari Alexa Mini sat at the end of my bed <laughs> that is what I'd love to see <laughs> so just... yeah <laughs> why not I I I know there's one brand that does it they're very expensive Hasselblad yeah I don't, they yeah. they have this but I would love to see Sony's Canon's Nikon um <laughs> Have internal storage, so you don't that have to use be, SD yeah. cards. The has I know there's a Hasselblad because one of my friends Tiggs has one. She t- t- did some photos of me whilst I was doing photos mm. for her, and I mean the Hasselblad photos look great straight out of camera. But her camera has got one terabyte of internal storage, mm. unreal. But I think that camera is also like really expensive because it happened with well with the drones. Obviously, yeah, mine has internal now, but. When I had the Phantom Three, the mm-hmm. amount of times I used to leave the house without an SD card and yeah. be like, "Oh no!" Like, like I, there's nothing you can do in that situation. Literally, so you can't fly. Whereas, like, it saved me so many times having internal Literally. storage. So I think they should do it. Imagine like you rock up with your Sony to a shoot and you don't have to worry about your SD card and knowing that you've got say yeah. like 128 gig or yeah. you know a terabyte. I Even mean, I terabyte. could like start filming a wedding on a camera and then I wouldn't have to keep changing SD cards because mm. I fill up so many cards whereas um, yeah like that would ruin the, the SD card industry though wouldn't it it would yeah I mean there's certain things crying. yeah Sandisk would be crying um, I mean what, what's, what SD cards do you use Sandisk Le- yeah I'm on Lexar at the moment mm. Yeah. I used to use Lexar, but I had like one bad experience. So I was like, I'm not risking for weddings. <laughs> They've been pretty fast. Like I've got a Lexar. They are here. fast, but I don't know what happened to mine. Mine just corrupted once, and then mm. it was just really annoyed me. So I was like, Sandisk. I've been using these ones. They're V60. I'm gonna get maybe like a couple of V90s. They're gonna be very mm. expensive, just so I can shoot 4K60 and S and Q. Yeah, because you can shoot 4K60 normal yeah. on that. But if you want to shoot it in S and Q, you need a V ninety card, uh, which is weird. I think also the um, what's it? Uh, the Kingston ones are meant to be quite good as well. Kingston, 
Mm. I'm not sure what they're like price wise, but I've been well, I say I've been recommended. I've seen people use them and say that they're decent. They got UHS two or Kingston. whatever it's called. Um, oh, Kingston. Interesting. What's that? A v oh V ninety, two hundred fifty six gig. <laughs> Jesus, the price of that. Jesus Christ! Bloody <laughs> hell. Okay, how much oh is 128 gig? Because 128 gigs good enough for me. Yeah. 128 gigs, 102 pounds for a V90. I mean... I did spend almost Jesus. 100 pounds on my Lexar, which is why I was so pissed off when it corrupted. Lexar. Which why I never went back. So that... So a Kingston... We're going to have a little deep dive here. A Kingston, <laughs> 128 gig, V90. Yeah. Is 102 pounds. Let's see what a Lexar one is. Uh... V90, let's go to 128 gig, 153, 53. Jesus, same specs, 300 megabytes per second, 128 gig, V90, UHS2, bloody hell. <laughs> SD cards are expensive. I'm they like, are. literally, imagine if cameras had internal storage. Yeah. Like, 128 gig, like, that's enough for me. No, exactly. That would be great. Oh my word, that is insane though. Yeah. And on that note, we're going to go die from depression now because of how much storage is. Yeah, to be fair, <laughs> I have been thinking I need to buy some more SD. I need to buy some more micro SDs. Micro I SDs. I have one that works on my drone now. And that's yeah. what's really annoyed me with DJI because obviously mm. I got another, um, when I bought my last drone, they gave me a SD. Oh, they it. often give you like yeah. a free one, don't they? Which they've upped the specs on the drone and software updates so much so that that it's now SD too now slow. doesn't work. That's and I was like, well... Like now I'm gonna have to keep buying more, and like the SD card that you gave me mm. now doesn't work because I've got a 128 gig one in here mm. in the Roadcaster. Um, I don't think I've ever wiped that card because the drone files aren't too beefy, and the WAV files on here aren't too expensive, like too mad. So I, we could still record for like another 14 plus hours on this. Really? Which is mad. Um, Did I just move? I feel like that screen just shifted a little bit. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe because I like. I don't know. <laughs> Glitch. Glitch in the roadcaster. Funky eyes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, people, thanks for listening, watching. Yeah. Um thanks for tuning back again. Thanks for tuning in. We've got some guests coming up. We got some we got a guest from Canada, a yeah. Britain Canada. Um the epic Chris Brockhurst. We got a guy called Cameron coming on. Yeah. Um, I've got I've got his name. I've got his name. I, I, we've got to do him just him justice because he's he's a nice guy. He's been in my DMs. He's the Aussie, isn't he? He's from Australia. Yeah, he's from Queensland, That'd Australia. So it's going to be weird. We're going to be recording that at like be an interesting 6 p.m. Yeah. our time. No, sorry, 9 a.m. our time, but it'll be like 7 p.m. his time. That is crazy. Weird, isn't it? Um, yeah, we've got Cameron McDonald coming on. We've got Kirsty Boubert, wedding yeah. photographer. That was going to be dope. And then, yeah, so we've also got Jed as oh, well. Oh, Jed as well, yes. Friends with Elliot. Elliot, they're like... Jed, Elliot, and Alex are like a little, a little trio. creative triangle that, I mean, they all do like different, different things. things, but like they, they all do film. So the, if we could get hold of Alex, that'd be brilliant. But that would, hard yeah. man to get hold of. Yeah, hard man to get hold of. But no, Jed's got loads to bring as well. So that'll be decent. So we've got loads lined up. Happy days. And uh, stuff. yeah, we'll see you guys in a bit. Bye-bye.